Hi, my name's Jenny Williams. Uh, I'm doing a video blog to look at um, stimulating some debate on football in South Australia, um, mainly having a look at both the AFL and the SANFL and working out whether we, as just the general public or people who have a real interest, can actually do something to um, make football back to where it should be in this state. Um, the bottom line of any organisation is not only to ensure the survival, but to ensure that it grows and prospers. The SNFL has guided football in this state to a very powerful position, and they should be congratulated. But like all big institutions, it will, and it has been challenged, by changes in society, monetary funding, and even some peculiarities in South Australia, such as the weather patterns. We don't have a roof. So with the primary objective of keeping or making football the number one sport in South Australia, the SANFL has a mandate to foster the sport and also ensure the welfare of all of those individuals involved in the game. As a work and organisational psychologist with both research, research data and practical experiences with the AFL sites and also at elite level in other sporting codes, I'd like to offer some insights into aspects that should be considered as part of the debate. My dad spent much of his time when he was retired from the game looking at the bigger picture and I can't help but follow his lead at this time. Primarily, a rich SANFL has benefits for all levels of football within the state, so the number one consideration should be what is the best way of contributing and generating money in this state. The SANFL um, competition is absolutely popular and relatively well attended. But to those who assert it being more popular than the AFL competition, I would suggest you only need to look at the gate figures and also the broadcast figures. Even the worst port game generally has more people attending it than when you add the entire SANFL round together. Grassroots footy is great. We've got to keep it great. But it does not have the membership and support of our AFL clubs and it is there we need to look at where to start. Let's have a top-down focus rather than just looking from the bottom up. In order for the SNFL to grow and continue to support the community, the primary focus must be on the Crows and the power. A performance outcome for them should something be something like one of those teams should win a performance every, uh, premiership every seven years, with both of them making the finals on a 60 to 75% basis. This is the most optimistic and also realistic if we actually put all of our uh, energy into going forward. A premiership is a huge bonus for the state and regardless of which club, individuals who support us, we've got to have a thrash them on the field attitude towards each other and a working together off the field attitude. The football pie in South Australia has always been big enough for two AFL teams, but if we keep denigrating it, saying how bad the clubs are, how bad the facilities are, how bad our players are, then what happens is people listen to that and actually think it mustn't be worth going to. We act like ad anti-advertising. Whereas advertising tells people how great something is and everyone wants to buy it, we're doing the exact opposite with what we're doing. It Continually bashing our sides and our facilities is not helping. We are making a habit of it in South Australia and I think it's about time we started looking at things another way. So the first thing I'd like the SNFL to consider is, can we actually look at saying that the power of the Crows should make the grand final every seven years, one of those two teams, and both of them, let's get them into the finals on a 60 to 75% basis. So the next question comes down to, how do we do that? Well, having worked at the power and having both brothers coaching at both AFL and one of them at the SNFL level at the same time, I actually saw what it's like to have people playing with and coaching with divergent goals. It created a huge concern for players moving between the competitions and there is little consideration given necessarily to individual development because both clubs need to win. And that's actually fair enough from both the SANFL and AFL perspective. Examples of this are when teams or players are given completely different roles in teams and that one maybe is playing a press and the other one doesn't have anything like it and the players are absolutely confused. They often even don't know the names of the people they're playing with. So how do we get this to be better for our clubs? Well, the number one thing is the Crows and the Power must be part of a 10-team SANFL competition with reserves. So again, reserves teams in a 10-team SANFL competition. This would allow fast tracking of both the AFL towards our goal, the teams, and also aid in individual development of players. 
Uh, as part of my research, I looked at why players play as well as good level coaching. And the things that I actually found out were the four main reasons that drive our AFL players are things such as hedonism, having fun, entertaining, showing you just how good they are, affiliation, being with others, making connections, having mates they really care about being with other people. Recognition, seeing their performances and good, good efforts rewarded. And last of all, commerce. They only play for a few years and they need to be very careful with how and where they spend their money. As a psychologist, I then look at the current situation from an individual player perspective. Those players selected in the AFL 21 regularly have little problem in their needs being met. But what about those on the periphery, those who go up and down between the teams? Managers of these players should be less focused on immediate money or pay value and instead on how the AFL clubs are developing their skills and their mastery. Sound plan development with an emph emphasis on particular skills training will fast track performance and that will actually help them improve and then later on the money will flow. I'm also really concerned with psychological health of all of these individuals. Those at the end of their career being long, long term uh, players or even rookies that are delisted lose most of those four drivers above. They work, their work will not be as much fun, uh, it won't be as entertaining, they will not see their mates every more every day, uh, their recognition level drops as does their financial rewards. For the lucky few this isn't the case but for so many it takes away life's purposes and often breaks their heart and sometimes breaks their spirit. I'd like to call the next bit the uh, Tyson Edwards and Josh Carr effect. A Crows and Power Reserve side can not only help these, those other individuals individually, but also help the team. Imagine keeping Josh Carr and Tyson Edwards around. If they were not encouraged to retire, but along with some of the young delisted players were able to stay on and to continue being part of the club. What better way to help younger players improve than keeping your champions on the field with the young men to whom they have maybe even never played a game with. The wisdom and guidance of experience will fast track those younger players and give the AFL teams a much greater chance of success. They will also know team rules, team plays and instructions that maybe will be consistent throughout the club. The business of the AFL also may become less cutthroat and our teams may start to resemble clubs again rather than corporate identities and in fact club culture will really develop and flourish. Telling players you care about them, then trading them, retiring or dropping them does not help people feel devotion and having a close-knit seconds really would. Coming from Alberton in the 80s, I can tell you there were a lot of people, one guy even played over 200 AF, uh, SNFL reserve games for the Maggies. We know their names. Uh, the whole thing is it became a club. People cared and people wanted to be around and stay around. And they stay friends as they get older in life. We lose our champions in this game a year or two early and belonging is important to everyone. Finally, on that point, we cannot match the money or the employment opportunities of interstate clubs. So what's the only way we really have a chance to keep our players and that's to show we care and give, them a, give young men a chance to feel like they belong, they make a difference and they are developed to be the absolute best that we can expect them to be. With that in mind, then comes my third thing that I'd really like to see the SNFL do, and that is ensuring the SNFL clubs are well resourced, funded, and actually have an advantage in the local league. So in those 10 teams, we make sure we look after the other teams. How do we do that? Well, the Power and Crows play home and away on a weekly basis, leaving a large supporter base at home, some of whom go to the SNFL. With the, S with the AFL reserve sides, more people are likely to attend these games and see how their young guns are heading. This would have a focus, this, these teams wouldn't be focused on winning, they would have a focus on developing their young team and winning would be a secondary concern. The competition could or would be structured with a different point system for the SNFL teams, both in games and on the premiership table. Either you could have a handicapping system, perhaps four goals per quarter, maybe the SNFL um, teams could get four points for a win, uh, when they play the Power or the Crows, and most of all, the deck is stacked against the uh, AFL sides, but if they make the finals, they deserve it. Again, this could be reviewed after every season. We could try something rather than sit and say, this is how it is, let's actually do something proactive and give it a go. The gate tankings are also important. 
The SNFL club would always play home when the AFL team was away and they would keep 85% of the gate takings. I can imagine when the Crows are away, I live at Glenelg, and imagine the uh, Crows' second side playing the Bays. There would be 20,000 people down the Bay. It would be like the old days, you wouldn't get a park there. And again, all the gate takings, food and all of that would go to the Glenelg team. Total numbers of people watching football across this state would improve. And of course, when it's a um, home game at Adelaide Oval or Amy Stadium, wherever it is, uh, again, gate-sharing uh, gate um, things would be put in place, but also the SNFL team would have a chance to play in front of so many people and really get a chance to see what a finals like at, um, atmosphere is. So um, there may be other obstacles, of course, some other people are going to say, what about the under 18s? But let's actually try solutions first and keep modifying it until we get it right. Things like the under 18s, there would still be 10 teams, but we'd have an Indigenous or Amateur League uh, team filling the two gaps, or maybe the Magpies could stay at under 18 level and there's only one gap. Again, great businesses stay fresh, look to create solutions rather than just talking about problems. We need a strong AFL team while fostering the SNFL. So the Crows and the Power need to be strong, but the SNFL still needs to be looked after. We need a top-down attitude. This article is designed to at least stimulate more debate, and if things aren't broken, I say don't fix it. But maybe now it's time to look at some alternatives. We can't afford to stagnate. I'm listening to blame games going on, and nothing is actually helping. I've addressed a whole lot of these options. You can have a look on my website, read it. I need your help. I need your opinion. It doesn't matter whether you think, you know, oh, she's an old woman, how dare she have an opinion. Again, let's look at what we want. Let's first of all have a really strong state of football within South Australia. Let's have reserve sides in a 10-team competition for the Crows and the Power and let's keep the SNFL well funded. We need to pass it on, we need to understand that this is a really important thing that if you have an opinion don't just sit there. Let's actually get the SNFL and our two AFL sides working together and let's actually make a difference to football in South Australia. As I said, let me know what you think. Um, Whatever it is, it's better than sitting around doing nothing. Thank you very much for your attention and we'll catch you at the footy. Bye.